and welcome back so this is exciting so you know i've been going on about this for a long time now i've been putting pictures up and going on about it but i thought Do you know what tonight is a beautiful evening and uh, i have to go to work this evening so but before i do that i had a bit of spare time on my hands and i thought Do you know what let's go and look at some local history and at first i was only going to come out to the martello tower but then my brain started going and I thought, you know what, I'm going to take you up to Cape Le Fern because it's not that far. And next thing you know, we, we've done nearly three sites. But anyway, this is the real reason why I want to do live videos tonight. So let me turn you around because you don't want to keep looking at my ugly mug. And there it is. The thing that I keep going on and on and on about all the time. Martello Tower number three. So, what do we know about the Martello Towers? And we'll get up a bit closer in a minute. And I did explain it in the other video just a minute ago, what the Martello Towers were built for. So again, I'll explain it again for those of you that missed it. So the Martello Towers were constructed in 1806 for the anticipation of invasion of Great Britain by Napoleon during the Napoleonic Wars. But, um, sorry, yeah, so during the Napoleonic Wars. But over time, they've fallen into disrepair, some of them. As I explained up at the other spot on the Warren, they are 200 years old. So that's pretty amazing. Um, originally, on the roof, you would have a cannon, a pretty huge cannon, uh, with the capabilities of firing out to sea. But you could also, obviously it was, free, it was 360 degrees, so you could turn it all the way around, you could fire inland as well. But in World War II, they were converted, and obviously they wouldn't have been using cannons like they used during the Napoleonic period. They were mounted with great big, sorry, I'm a bit out of breath. Very unfit. They were mounted with big, uh, you know, um, naval guns. Again, threat of invasion from the Germans this time. Now this one has had multiple uses. At one stage it was used for a local volunteer coast guard unit which is now housed somewhere else. But that's what it was used for at one point. It now sits in the middle of a golf course or a putting green. nevertheless very interesting now martello tower number 24 in dimchurch is still operating and still the same as it was 200 years ago and at some point i do have permission to go down there and do a little bit of filming and i'm going to do a bit of both i'm going to uh do a few live streams but I'm also going to put a video together I'm working on a video of the defense of the uh, south east coast of England anyway and I'm building it up over time so the structure on the top that was added for the purpose of the volunteer lifeguard people who are now in that building there you can see and their job is to I think they man that 24 hours a day and they're there as a backup for the Coast Guard if anybody gets in, in any distress in the English Channel uh, they have capabilities of scrambling together lifeguards or whoever you know. also this site also has underneath this ground a lot of stuff to do with the Cold War, and those 
those concrete structures you can see sticking out of the ground are remnants of that. And then during World War II, this whole area would have been used as a defence against invasion by Germany, like I said, including the Martello Towers. This one has just been left up here. Although they are protected. And I mean, I keep seeing an old sign when I drive into Folkestone saying that there was a visitor centre. Well, I don't know whether, whether that was inside or what, I have no idea. But that was a long, long time ago. But as you can see, the design of a Martello tower is this shape. And, and the fault behind it was that it would deflect cannonballs. garrisoned inside you can get some great views up here as well folks then Cliffs they go all the way round to Dover. Martello Tower number one, there in the distance. And I think, although the sun's so bright, I can't really see. Yes, I can just see poking out of the trees Martello Tower number two, which you probably can't see. Anyway, I'll do another loop and then I shall bid you farewell. And remember, like I said as well, the Martello Towers are all linked to the defence of the south coast of England, which include a 28 mile long canal called Royal Military Canal, starts in Seabrook goes through Hive and goes all the way to a place called Cliffs End near Hastings in East Sussex and along that way there are loads of Martello Towers there's loads in Sandgate, Hive, all the way along there um, some of them even go along the uh, uh, East Sussex coastline Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my three little videos. They were completely unplanned. Um, I literally only decided that I was going to come out like literally about an hour, uh, two hours ago, sorry. Um, I realised I had a spare bit of time before I go to work tonight. But I do unfortunately have a real job. Histo being a historian is not a real job, unfortunately. I wish it was, but it's not. There you go. And uh, I hope you enjoyed my content. Um, also, don't forget, um, I do a lot of stuff with Ty. Tyler McGraw, the Unfilled Historian. We do a lot of stuff together. Most Sundays you can be able to catch us on Unfiltered Conversations where we'll just talk a load of rubbish about history or whatever we fancy talking about. Um, I've got loads of podcasts planned. I've got a trip to the US coming up in August. And also, today I have found out that my friend Mark Wheatcroft and I, are, well, he's he's come up with an idea of us going on a little trip somewhere in the near future in Belgium. And you've got to guess where it is. It's something to do with Napoleonic Wars, but I'm not going to tell you where it is. So that's all exciting. Lots coming up. Again, I'm going to be at the Emergency Civil War Symposium. There are still tickets left if you need, if you want one, go and get one. It's well worth it. This year's theme is. Uh, the great what ifs of the civil war and their keynote speaker is none other than Gary Adelman I mean you know who doesn't want to hear Gary Adelman speak honestly if you're an American civil war buff I would, you know I would definitely want to hear that also they're going to have a debate 
about what ifs, which is going to be really cool. I've already thought up a few questions that I'm going to ask when I get there uh, on that. Uh, sorry, on that debate. That'll be really cool. Again, between me and Tyler, we've got lots planned throughout the year. I've got podcasts planned for right up until at least October at the moment. My next one, I'm sitting down with Central Virginia Battlefields Trust Terry Rensel. We're going to be talking about Central Virginia Battlefields Trust and the work they're doing to try and save battlefields in Central Virginia, which is really important. Um, then in July, I have something coming up with Emerging Civil War. We're going to do something along the lines of the history of, of Emerging Civil War. As you, some of you might know, Emerging Civil War is 11 years old this year. And uh, the people uh, involved in Emerging Civil War put so much hard work into everything they do. So please go and give them a follow. They do have a really cool Facebook page and a really good blog page. Uh, but all that's left to say is I'm going to leave you with Martello Tower number three and a sunset here in Folkestone, Kent. Remember, guys, if you live in the area, get out off your sofa, come out and visit these places. A lot of people don't know what these places are. They just look like concrete buildings and they don't know what they are. 200 years old, you know. So, so important to, to our local history and to get out and explore. And again, like I keep saying many times, even if you're not into history, come out, get some fresh air. It's good for your mind.